Okay, 4.3. What we want to do now is essentially we have this least squares regression line and we can use StatCrunch to find it. The question we have is, is it a good line? How do we know? And so that's what we're going to do now. We're going to introduce a new statistic called the coefficient of determination. We're going to introduce some way to analyze residuals and use those residuals to see if a linear model uh, is appropriate. So let's jump in. So uh, again, the basic question here is, is a linear model appropriate and does it do a good job approximating the data? And we're going to have another statistic called the coefficient of determination and then we're also going to analyze residuals. So the coefficient of determination, the, the meaning for that, and this is important, uh, I'm going to ask you this probably on the next test, um, the coefficient of determination, it's a percentage and it's the percent of the variation in your response variable like the compass, al the compass algebra score it's the percent that's explained by this line and so the higher that percentage the better the closer to 100 percent the better that model is um, so uh, let me see here as long as we're thinking about it let's go over here and here is the r squared which is literally just the square of r so the correlation coefficient uh, 0.45 if you square that you get about 0.2 so about 20 percent of the variation in the compass scores are explained by ACT not that good so <laughs> it's not a great model it's better than nothing I mean it's not just random they weren't just filling up the up the board there was some linear correlation there but but not great definitely not a great model so residuals uh, a general residual model is a residual plot is where you take all of those distances from the line and now the x value stays the same it's the like a for an example it's the ACT score the predictor and the y values just become residuals and you'll notice that I have uh, the x-axis here the horizontal axis in the middle just because some are above the line some are below the line so you're always going to have zero right in the middle so for example, suppose we have um, this predictor and response. These are just made up. They're not from any particular data set. But the line might look something like that. Uh, when we look at the residuals, like the first one here is right on the line. The second one is above the line, so a positive residual. Uh, and so that's what a residual plot looks like. What we want to do then is maybe answer some questions about that and what's a good residual plot. Um, Right, so those red lines that represent the residuals, so that first one represents the residual over here, and then this second one represents the residual on that far right point. Okay, so there are three things we want to avoid. What we don't want is a pattern in the residuals. Uh, we don't want them to get narrower or start close and get wider. Uh, and then we'll talk about influential observations. Um, in a second as well. Basically we want them to be evenly spread above and below. We don't want a pattern where they start below the line, end up above the line, or start and or you know go back and forth or anything like that. We want them equally spread above and below the least squares regression line, meaning on the residual plot they're equally spread above and below zero because some are above, some are below, and they're kind of equal all the way across. So a pattern residual, what would that look like? Well here's a nice related plot but not linearly related uh, linearly related easy for me to say uh, if we did a line it would not fit very well but we could do a line and you can look here at the beginning they're all below the line then they're all above the line and then at the end they're all below the line again so if we did a residual plot they would start below then be above then be below that's not good so that means a linear model is not appropriate so there's a pattern in the residuals. So the residuals have a pattern and that's no good. All right, now increasing and decreasing spread. You look at this one, like it looks pretty good, right? They look pretty linear. You draw a line, like looks great. Uh, but then when you do the residual plot, they start close, but then they spread out as you go further. And that's not good either. That means that linear relationship is not consistent. So you can't have an increasing or decreasing spread either. So they start close, but then they spread out as the predictor increases. 
Last thing is talking about influential observations. So I have, again, just some data here and some points made up. Uh, predictor and response. And I've got a few outliers. You can kind of see them highlighted. We have this one on the far left, we have one above it, and then we have a one right in the top there. So those are three clear outliers. Um, these two on the left just have lower predictor values than everybody else. Uh, and then otherwise, you know, they might not have outlier um, in one variable, the predictor or response, but when you plot them, the combination puts them away from the other data. So the question is, are they influential? Do they change the line? So let's look here. Um, to, to check for influence, we would have to remove that observation and then see if the least squares regression line and R squared had significant changes. So case one. Um, here's the original equation. And then after we remove that, you can see that the, the R squared actually goes down a little bit because this one might actually pull it and make that relationship a little stronger there. But not a huge change. I mean, it, it changed some, definitely, but, but not, a, not a crazy change. Uh, if we look at case two, whoa, big change. The slope change, look at the y-intercept went from 15 to negative 2.7. R squared really increased. It looks like that case two really threw the model off. If you take that one out, you get a 69%. 69% of the variation is explained by the line. That's really good. So that one, boy, that is clearly influential. Uh, and then case three, this one seems as high up as case two, but it doesn't seem to have as large of an effect. Still a pretty large effect, but I mean, it still it does change the slope and the y-intercept, but not nearly as much as these two, right? Not nearly as much. The reason is, uh, there's a there are a bunch of points below it, so they kind of counterbalance. When you have a bunch of data points down here and there's one up here, the effect of that one is minimized by all those points underneath it. Whereas with uh, with case two, there was only one point underneath it, so it can maybe kind of pull that least squares regression line up. Um, so um, now that I think about it, I maybe should have drawn that on there to show what that would look like. That would be a nice visual as well, but. The, the point here that case two is influential because it's going to pull that line and really change it. So case one, predictor is an outlier, but it's not influential. Uh, case two, it's an outlier and it's influential because there's not a lot of other points near it to minimize its effect. Uh, case three, it's an outlier, but it's not really influential because there's a bunch of points underneath it that really limit its effect on the least squares regression line. All right, so let's look at a residual plot here from ACT. And I think it's going to be another option here. So ACT, Math, and Compass. And then let's see, Graphs. Oh, is it the Residual Index? No, we want um, residuals versus x values. So we want residuals on the y, x values on the horizontal. That's what we want. Uh, and I think let's just do that. Let's see what that looks like. So here's our same thing. It gives us the same output, but then you see there's the there's an option to go to another screen here. So let's take a look at this. So zero is in the middle. Hmm. I actually haven't done this before. I just wanted us to play around with some data. I mean, it looks pretty spread out, but then it seems to kind of condense, and we've got some outliers here. Let's go back. Let's leave this up here. Let's go graph and scatter plot. Let's see if there are some influential observations. See, we've got these over here on the right. Um, those might be influential observations, and we probably would need to remove those and see if that changed it, like this 25 and 30, 38, something like that. So I'm going to keep this up here, and I'm going to see if I can find that. This is too much here, too much on the screen at once. Let's see if I can find that 25 and 38. There it is, 25 and 35. So let's just delete that, 25 and 35. We're just going to delete that, and then run this again
And let's see. The slope didn't change that much. Well, I don't know. It went from 2 to 2.2. The y-intercept changed from about 4 to about 0. R didn't change that much. R squared didn't change that much. So it, I don't know, it doesn't really look like it's that much of a change. So it's an outlier, but it didn't really affect, um, didn't seem to really affect the least squares regression line that much. So, boy, this is, this is kind of what statisticians do. Nothing's really clear cut, but this looks like a linear model is okay. It's not great, um, but there's nothing here that really would say, no way, don't do it. Uh, okay. I think... That's it. Yep, so that's the end of 4.3. Two ways to really diagnose um, whether a linear, model is, a linear model is good. One is with your coefficient of determination, the R squared. Second is with a regression plot. And you're looking for um, no patterns in the regression plot. You're looking for an even spread. And then you're looking for influential observations.